Chapter 8 The foxes began to starve. That evening, three tents were put on in the center on the hill. One for bogies, and one for buns, and one for bean. The tents surrounded Mr. Fox's hole, and the three farmers sat outside their tents eating their supper. Bogies had three boiled chickens smothered in dumplings. Buns had six donuts filled with disgusting goose liver paste and Bean had two glass gallons of cider. All three of them kept their guns beside them. Bogus picked a steaming chicken and held it close to the fox's tunnel. Can you smell this, Mr. Fox? He, he shouted. Lovely, tender chicken. Why don't you come out and get it? The rich scat, scant of chicken wafted down the tunnel to where the foxes were crunching. Oh, Dad, said one of the small foxes, couldn't we just sneak up and snatch it out of his head? Don't you dare, said Mrs. Fox. That's just what they want to want you to do. But we are so hungry, they cried. How long will it be till we get something to eat? Their mother didn't answer them, nor did their father. There was no answer to give. As darkness fell, buns and beans switched on the powerful headlamps of the two tractors and shone them on the hole. Now, said Bean, we'll take it in turn to keep watch. Um, one watches while two sleep and so on all through the night, Bobby said. What if the fox digs a hole right through the hill and comes out on the other side? We didn't think of that one, did we? Did you? Of course I did, said Bean, pretending he had. Go on then, tell us the answer, said Bogus. Bean picked something small and black out of his ear and flicked it away. How many men have you got working on the farm? On your farm, he asked. Thirty-five, Bogus said. I've got thirty-six, Bun said. I've got thirty-seven, Bean said. That makes... One hundred and eight men are together, all together. We must order them to surround the hill. Each man will have a gun and a flashlight. There will be one escape except then for Mr. Tar Fox. So the order went down to the farms. And that night, one hundred and eight men found a tight ring around the bottom of the hill. They were armed with sticks and guns and hatchets and pistols and all sorts of other horrible weapons. This made it quite impossible for 
a fox or indeed for any other animal to escape from the hill. The next day, the watching and the waiting went on. Buggies and buns and pins set open small stools, staring the foxes, staring at the foxes' hole. They didn't talk much. They just sat there with their guns on the laps, on their laps. Every of oh, every so often, Mr. Fox would creep a little closer towards the mouth of the tunnel and take a sniff. They he, then he would creep back again and say, they're still there. Are you quite sure? Mrs. Fox would ask. Positive, said Mr. Fox. I can smell that man being a mile away. He stinks.